Well, it's been a while since I've made a video, and there's been a few things going on, but mainly, and kind of what this video is about, is I've been going back and doing a lot of research on early tape music, and a lot of this was sort of uh, spurred from getting into the uh, Bukla Tip Top modules. Um, I'd, I'd kind of known some stuff about Don Bukla before that, but I was really interested in, you know, really the, the beginnings of modular synthesis. And a resource for that, which I highly, highly recommend, is this uh, the San Francisco uh, Tape Music Center book. And there's also some videos that you can find on YouTube of some of the performances that they had. Um, and that's kind of later in the, I think, early 2000s, most of that stuff. Um, but through that, I've gotten really interested in, maybe I've always been interested in this since getting into modular, mainly because the morphogene was one of the early modules that I had. But I've been interested in this idea of, you know, sampling stuff and then mutating it. I've almost, <laughs> I feel like since I can remember, I've been really interested in that. But to take that a step further back instead of further forward there's this completely slept on module from uh, Tesseract I think is how you pronounce it and it's this little FM it's an FM radio an mp3 player via USB or um, SD card it has Bluetooth built into it and it has a stereo line in and you can only use one of these sort of like inputs at one time. You can't use them all at the same time. But with shipping, this was $40. And I mean, it is very cheap looking. Like I'm pretty sure that this is basically just like a repurposed uh, receiver that you would typically have like in like a pontoon boat or something because it is very small. Um, could be in a car as well. But with that, you know... Being that it has a radio on it, obviously you can load sounds into it, and that's a cool way to use it. But something that I've been doing recently is just, you know, having it set to the uh, the FM radio, and then let's try to follow the signal path here. And I know this looks like there's a lot of crap going on, and that's not. I mean, it is kind of the case, but at the same time, it's relatively simple. So let's follow the patch cables. So out of here, you have a stereo out, which is also nice. Um, but I'm just going mono, uh, left signal out into the 4MS listen IO, uh, just to like, this is basically where you would plug like a line input, like if you're plugging a synth, um, something that's not modular level, and then it gives you modular level. You don't actually have to do that with this, but I do find the output is just like a little low. So this is essentially just like an amplifier. And then it goes out of here. Um, another big piece of this patch is the Div Kids Mutes. Um, and this is a big part in that it is... So it's put in here upside down, and that's something that... I don't know, I didn't think about that for like the first few weeks that I had this, but I was like, wait, with Euro Rack, you can put anything however you want. So with it upside down, I like this because you can... When you then throw these to the left, it's just like a short sort of thing and then if you throw it to the uh or it would <laughs> it's the left if it is uh installed the proper um way but to the right it's just a little throw and then to the left it's full open so that's again it's just the signal from the radio going into here muted that's going then into this uh vca which isn't really that important um in this patch and then it goes from the vca into the panharmonium, which is relatively important because this is like a re-synthesizer, um, which might sound strange, and it actually is quite strange. Um, it's almost like running it through like a an old, like, digital computer's interpretation of what uh, the original audio is. And I find it's really fun for this because you're able to run stuff through it and get this weird digital thing and then you can kind of slow down how quickly it analyzes that audio to get these really nice like pad uh, chord hold things especially like on the sign setting you have all these different waveforms uh, for the analysis so it goes from there 
Again, we're still mono up to this point, then into the herb verb, just for like a little reverb. Then I have kind of like a macro on the pressure points here for the dry and wet of this and also the mimeophone. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it goes out of the herb verb into the cue pass. And I feel like the cue pass to me, I, I had thought about getting rid of it at some point because I was like, oh, I kind of just want a regular filter because this is very, very quirky and how it works and what you can do with it. Um, but I've kind of had a re sort of invigoration with uh, with using it, especially with using the radio as a sound source. Um, in this patch example, we're just using the low pass out, which is relatively boring. But once you get into like using the band pass and the uh, smile pass, it's, it's really, really fun. And this is just a way to filter the audio and you could have this set up however you want. I've recently been doing it where it goes from reverb into uh, the filtering and then from the filter another new addition is the mimeophone which I'm absolutely in love with and this is great because the the zones portion is being modulated so the way that I understand it so far and I haven't read through the manual yet but the zones are like these little windows of like like places the audio can go into and then you can kind of scrub through those zones and those zones are, you know, all the way down. It's a very, very short uh, zone or window to very, very long. And I'm not sure how many you have in here. It's like eight or something like that. Um, so when you're modulating this and running audio through it, the audio is almost getting chopped up into these different zones. And then as you continue to modulate it and stop the incoming audio, it's going to go back and kind of play those windows of audio and also depending on how much you have the repeats up so it's very 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 fun very creative and then going from that to the morphogene which is essentially you know a, a almost like a dual tape machine in terms of you're able to record into it splice and then overdub and uh it's it's been one of my favorite modules for the longest time but in this sort of context it's like even more fun all right, so let's toss some stuff in here. I'm just going to, you know, the fun thing about the radio is you don't really know what you're going to get. <laughs> so that's one splice. We can actually turn up the pan harmonium and also throw some stuff in here. Like that. There you go. Recording that. We can change the splice over here on pressure points. Change the pitch. <laughs> Very alien, uh, forbidden planet type vibe. And again, we have modulation coming from the woggle bug here. Interesting. Also switch back to that first splice. Throw some more stuff in there. I have the mimeophone up a little bit here. Bring up the filter as well. Turn down the modulation. It's also affecting QPOS. Record that a little bit. Some of those nice stereo things happening there. Switch to that splice. Again, I think my favorite thing about the Morphogene is that it really is... It can do a lot of things, obviously, but when you use it in this way where you're kind of modulating a few things and throwing some very, like, strange audio into it, like, as you bring up the morphs, it just turns into this weird uh, texture, almost like environment, 
Um, and for me, this is how I like to start a lot of songs is just get some sort of tones in there. And, you know, it's like you're almost creating an atmosphere first and then, you know, laying drums or what, what have you after that. So let's see what else is going on here. Another nice splice. You do a little bit of overdubbing too. It's actually really fun once you get some drums kind of happening in there. Now we're on that splice that we just overdubbed on. That's interesting. Some of that stuff's fun. I, again, when you find kind of drums. <laughs> Switch to that splice. And if we modulate the gene size, that's where some real fun comes in. So I'm going to throw this woggle bug uh, modulation in there. <laughs> it's fun. If we crank the mimeophone dry and wet all the way up, again, we have modulation going to the zones here. Record a longer splice here. I should have noted that this uh, second switch of mutes is going to the record and splice, so every time I hit that, it records uh, a new splice. Yeah, that's fun. So this is that splice. Pitch it down and reverse. Let's overdub that with some of this panharmonium. Turn down the modulation. Again, it's just a lot of experimentation. Let's see, where is this organized going to? Oh yeah, that's right. So if I throw this, ooh. Turn down the modulation. So we'll throw this organized to the, let's turn all that down, all that down. Uh, we'll turn this, put this organized to the woggle bug, which then it's going to 
basically go through all these slices in succession to whatever the modulation is doing, which is semi-random. Again, very like music concrete. Not for everybody, for sure, but it's a lot of fun to do. So thanks for joining me on this little excursion into FM radio sampling and the modular. Um, again, if you have a modular, pick up this little Tesseract. Uh, it's called the Low Coast. I should have mentioned that earlier. Um, again, it's like 40 bucks shipped. Uh, great noise source. And, um, you know, with some of the make noise stuff and other effects modules, it's a lot of fun. So... Hope you enjoy this one, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.